persecution constantly happens, even in the midst of our network. We have NCD partners now in about 70 countries. And you can imagine that there are quite a number of countries where persecution and severe persecution happens. We encounter it maybe sometimes while traveling through mails that we get, through photographs that partners send us that document what has actually happened, or maybe by mails that you write and that are never answered because the person you wanted to communicate with is not alive any longer and he didn't die of a heart attack, you know what I mean? And neither his wife nor his kids can answer that mail because the whole family has become a victim of persecution. So these things are part of the NCD family. We encounter them constantly. And persecution is really more than just throwing stones into church windows. I mean, that can be almost funny compared to what persecution is really all about. Not just killing people, but the way how they are killed, how other people are, maybe the parents are uh, pushed to, to, to watch it. And all of this, I, I don't want to go into, into details uh, here. However, as we could expect from the Bible, it can be shown that this persecution is the other side of enormous growth of the church. I remember that some time ago when we had an NCD Global Summit and partners from most diverse countries came together to share about their experiences, the partner of one country in which severe persecution happens gave his testimony and among other things he shared the story about the story of his local church he's a local pastor as well and told the participants that his own church just in the preceding six months before he attended the summit grew by 1600 people which is quite quite dramatic and i remember that after his lecture he was approached by quite a number, especially of Western partners, who wanted to hear the secret of his success. So I overheard their discussion, how do we get there? How can we make the same experiences that you gained in your country? And I remember how he said in his friendly voice, you want to see a revival? Because what they have experienced was clearly a revival in the strict sense of the word. Pray for persecution, he said, and he did it with his Asian smile, but he meant it absolutely seriously. You know, I don't want to comment on that. However, I have experienced again and again that those people who are interested in revivals believe in this harmless deeply harmless form of revival. They believe revi revival means that simply thousands of people move into our churches, everything will become easier, and of course you will have much more money that you can give or that you can buy bigger cars or whatever. Whenever I had to do with authentic revivals, the very opposite holds true. Life always become, became much more difficult than it used to be. Before. Well, these churches, the suffering church, is part of our NCD network, of our NCD family. And I am convinced that their suffering is not in vain. Sometimes in, uh, on, a, on a human level, it looks like this. People pray that God may help them. And a day later they are killed and the whole family uh, as as well and you can ask the question uh, what is uh, you know was that in vain no if you should be in a country where no persecution happens and you should discover that at a given moment you see some 
unexpected spiritual fruit and you don't know where it comes from, be open for the option that this is the fruit of the suffering of Christians on another continent who literally gave their lives for you, for your ministry, for seeing spiritual fruit. In the NCD family, we are connected with each other and the contribution of the suffering church for all of us, including and especially those who are not suffering, should not be underestimated.